Okay, welcome to lesson two. This is on covalent bonding. Here are the objectives that we're going through today. And this is the definition of a covalent bond. Once again, you can see that we have the word electrostatic attraction. So a covalent bond is where we have uh, electron pair here and both nuclei are trying to grab onto it. So that means it's locked in position and that means that it won't conduct electricity and it'll have a very high melting boiling point. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this is really a bit of an extension of the ionic here. Uh, we, had, we just explained that ionic was uh, locked in place because there were positive and negative ions. Now we're seeing electrons locked in place because of uh, covalent bonds, but actually most compounds are somewhere in between uh, where it's not completely sharing uh, and it's not completely stealing, uh, which is the case here. These guys have been stolen uh, and these guys are sharing. So a lot of compounds have some element of um, ionic character and some element of covalent character. Uh, and these guys in the in between have polar covalent bonds. So it's not completely stolen by B, but B here is, is taking a larger share of it closer to the B nuclei. So how do we do this? Um, how do we understand this? Well, what we do is we have uh, this thing called the Van Arkel Kettler Triangle of Bonding, which is in your data booklet. And so let's have a look at some how we use this. So here we have a, a problem which is more ionic, sodium chloride or lithium chloride. So what we do here is we work out the electronegativity difference. We look up the data booklet for the electronegativity values. And then we also look up the average electro electronegativity for sodium chloride. So we get 2.3 and 2.05. We can then plot that on the Van Arkel Kettler triangle of bonding. And we do the same for lithium chloride what is the electronegativity difference and average electronegativity. And that there will allow us to have a close look at the diagram. And as you can see from the diagram, that sodium chloride is in fact closer to the point, the ionic point. Uh, so that would mean that it is more ionic. Uh, if you go towards the other tri the other end, the other point in the triangle, that, that has a more metallic character. And if you go to the other point, that has a more covalent character. So you would say that lithium chloride has more of a covalent character, has slightly more sharing uh, than the lithium chloride does. And the lithium chloride is the more ionic. Okay, now we can move on to polarity. And you can see here that this is how we write it. So you need to learn this. This is a special triangle, a uh, special arrow with a little cross at the end. Uh, that denotes where the negative area is. And you also need to do a small delta, small Greek letter D, delta negative delta plus. That shows us where the dipole moment, that's the key word there, the dipole moment is, and that's a permanent pole. Uh, you can see just because uh, a compound has negative poles, uh, it has a polar bond, polar covalent bond does not mean it is a polar molecule. It must be, not only have a polar bond, it must be asymmetrical. Now because this is symmetrical, there is a, a negative end here and a negative end here and there is no pole. You can see here water is a very polar molecule. You can see here it has a negative pole and here we have uh, two positive areas here. Here we have uh, a, a list of compounds. Now you can see that uh, with all the symmetrical ones, that's completely symmetrical. Uh, that's completely symmetrical. These are automatically nonpolar without even looking at the fact that they actually do have polar bonds. Now all the rest of these ones here uh, delta pos, delta neg, they are not only polar, uh, but they are also asymmetrical. So that is gives us a polar molecule. 
Now the advantage of this is they'll be much more strongly attracted to each other and they'll also be attracted to uh, static charges. So if you have a look here, water is very attracted to the static charge created on this rod and oil that is not very attract not very polar is not very attracted to the rod. Last thing for this lesson is bond strengths. You'll see from here that the triple bond is the strongest one, it's also the shortest one and this is a trend that's always seen. You can see it here, uh, you can see that this is the shortest one, it's also the strongest one, uh, so that if you're trying to break a particular bond, uh, these ones are going to be easier to break. Uh, please do note though that if you do divide this, this is actually three bonds together, if you do divide this by three, it is actually weaker than this, which makes sense because there is uh, electron repulsion. And finally, a summary. Uh, we, will we will do metallic bonding in lesson five, uh, but for the meantime, just note that it's the electrostatic attraction between ions, electrostatic attraction between nuclei, and this one's the electrostatic attraction between delocalized electrons. So please note with the strength of the bonds, for ionic compounds, it's to do with the degree of positive of the ions and negativeness of the ions. Uh, for covalent, it's to do with whether they're double or triple bonds that will increase their strength. And for metallic, well, you want a very small positive uh, ion that will increase the strength of the metallic bond.